Hey Yoda, Tinnikoto, hello and welcome back to another episode of Thomcraft 4.2 Adventures. Last time we got ourselves the Grinning Devil Face Splitter. <laughs> it looks pretty awesome, pretty menacing, pretty grinning devilly, and I've got my axe of grinning deviliness, and no, it's just the, the axe of the stream. I've got a cool little invention here that I've made off camera. I actually posted about this on Twitter. If you want to go ahead and follow me on Twitter to get some live updates on what I'm doing here in the Thomcraft world, I occasionally post screenshots and just talk about what I'm doing as well as other stuff to do with the channel. So, what the heck is this thing? It is a mass of Essentia tubes just kind of sitting around doing nothing. But really, what it's uh, the idea is in Thomcraft 2. You know, sort of dating back a couple of years ago now to my uh, Thorncraft 2 Let's Play, there was a uh, an item in that a block called the Vis Pump. Now, what the Vis Pump allows you to do is to send Vis in one side and eject it out the other, and it can be attracted to the one side. So, if for example you have Vis uh, that needs to travel a long distance, then you can bonk it in the middle and It'll increase the TCB, the Thorms per cubic block is what the pressure system, and that was known as, it's in the suction, it's known as suction in Thorncraft 4. So anyway, there is nothing quite like that in Thorncraft 4, except for a buffer. <laughs> so if we go ahead and get Thormy out first and talk a little bit about suction, or more specifically suction in relation to the buffer. So the, the Essentia buffer has a suction of 1 by default, but you can increase it up to 32 by attaching arcane bellows to it. And I have two bellows here, meaning that its suction is now 64. Where's my tuning fork? Let's get that out. So I'm not going to, uh, just, just before we get started a little bit more with this, um, I did invent this, but when I say invent, I don't mean that I'm not the only person that came up with this. I'm sure tons of other Thorncraft players have sort of come up with a system like this, but I just sort of made it by myself without referring to any guides. Anyway, here it is. The Essentia Buffer has a suction of 64. Now you can see this little red band on the side as well. Uh, so the suction here is zero. You can basically, you can shift click with your wand and it's got three different settings. The suction over here should now be uh, 63 because it's going into there, the highest suction. It looks like it's a... Uh, we could actually reverse the system, couldn't we? We should be able to actually. If I do that, this might actually work. <laughs> hmm. Are you drawing? Yeah, it looks like it's drawing. There we go. So that's what we've got to do to change it. Anyway, so are these red bands, basically the suction on this side gets choked back to zero. So the idea is over here, the suction is 63. So it's drawing Essentia in along this tube here. We've just got some Elba over here to demonstrate. And it is coming, it is being attracted into the buffer more than it is the jar. The jar, of course, has a suction of 32. Up here is a suction of 33. So this wants to head out that way. Essentia always wants to head towards the highest suction. And I guess the way that it works is that it'll look in every block around it and say, okay, this one's higher, so I moved there, right? So, yeah, so all of the Elba is moving towards the buffer. Now... I was a bit worried that this might not work, but it turns out that it does. When it's red like this, it means that the suction on this side is zero. So the, the Essentia buffer is doing nothing for the suction over here, right? Suction over here is only one because of this jar that's over here. You see where I'm going with this? The Essentia is coming in one side and it's going out the other. It doesn't, it doesn't really seem to make sense because uh, if you look at the suction here, it's 64, and then it's, you know, 1 over there. I'm not entirely sure exactly how, what's going on there, but, but basically it works the way that I want. Even if it's a little bit, uh, sort of, yeah, with the logic, but it, it's working, right? It's working sort of as intended, which is really, really awesome. So you can have really, really long piping networks of Essentia, and you can have something like this in the middle to be able to route the Essentia, you know, to uh, somewhere else. And the cool thing is that you can just chain these together. If you have a really, really long system, you can put two, three, ten, or three thousand in a chain if you want. It'll work just fine. But there is one small problem with it. It is very, very slow. 
We haven't even gotten half of a jar while I've been talking to you guys. And there isn't really any real way to make it faster. The problem there is that the suction is untyped. Untyped suction means that it will attract any Essentia towards itself. It's not just a locked suction like this guy over here is. That's only going to attract Elba, right? So this is untyped, and the untyped is always a little bit slower for some reason, as I've seen when I'm working with the alchemical furnace. So what is the practical application of something like this? Well, right here in the base, of course, we have these lamps of growth that are right here. And they need Erba Essentia, of course. Well, and it could work with any type of Essentia, but, you know, that's just a convenient example. We've got a bunch of Essentia over here, and it's only just enough... Well, I think in most cases there's actually a heap of Essentia still, but... You know, if this was any further back, it would be really nice to be able to put one of those in to send Essentia out into the world. And I'm actually... I'll go ahead and go upstairs a little bit more. Another really nice example with it is that you can use it up here, for example. I've got a couple of these set up in my system. I've updated it a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think you guys have seen most of this. But I've gone around to this side and I've started adding in these now that I've got myself some more gold and iron. I can splurge a little bit and get this going on. So the problem here is that these jars in over here only have a suction of 32. And 32 is nowhere near enough to route or to suck all the way from something like your alchemical furnace, right? Right. Which is why I've got this thing right here. It should be noted as well, uh... I just want to, let's go back down here and just highlight the fact that this is working. It is pulling Essentia out of here and plonking it in here even though there are no jar labels. That's what's really cool about the system, you don't need jar labels. Jar labels, if, to be honest, will actually make the system a little bit more uh, tricky to deal with because this it has double the suction of a normal jar anyway. So the idea is, I was doing this a little bit before, where's my hole, there we go. I was burning up some uh, bone meal because the bone meal breaks down into sensus. And so I had the system set up to where it was pumping stuff out. But then I realized, and that's what made me prompt to put this right here, because the smoke was happening right here, that blue smoke. And I was just like, oh, okay, it, it can't reach all the way to my uh, alchemical furnace. So I put one of these in and the thing worked a little bit better. Uh, interesting fact, I think this will actually work because this is untyped suction and this over here is untyped suction too. I think that'll actually make the system work a little bit faster. We'll have to test that at some point. I, I was doing a bit of work before and I noticed that. Cool beans, that's what's going on there. And I've just realized it wasn't actually part of the in initial design for this Essentia system, but because I have set it up to where each of these jars has its own private network, thanks to these Vs filters, what we can do later on when we have bucket loads of iron and gold to spend on Essentia tubes is that we can actually route these down and we could potentially send them over to the Alchemy Lab to connect up our Essentia storage here to our Alchemy Lab, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> when once something like that gets set up, that'd be fantastic. But yeah, so this uh, this is a heap of work. This is a lot of today's work, about two or three hours or so of me just kind of piddling around with the Essentia tubes and stuff like that, getting everything all set up. I think this is pretty cool. So the I and also as well, because I've got two of these on here, the reason that I have two is so that if I have a jar here of spare Essentia, I can go ahead and bonk that down and this thing will pull it out and put it in the right spot. Only half of the Essentia system is plugged in at the moment. I will need to get the other half sorted out at some point. But yeah, that's going to have to be for another day. In today's episode... Oh, and I wanted to demonstrate as well with this, by the way, because I was saying that the untyped suction uh, with this jar label. Let's just, before we get on to the rest of today, I just wanted to demonstrate that what I really would, what I think would be really awesome is if you could bonk this right here. Or maybe what you could do is put a filter right here. Maybe that will work for getting this thing working. I'll have to try that out. But anyway, let's set that up to do that. Set it on red mode. And this Essentia should filter back into here. Let's just 
hang around for a couple of seconds just to make sure. There we go. And it makes a massive green fog everywhere, but anyway. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the mighty phantasmic gravity. The the idea of gravity, no. Uh, we're going to be covering runic shielding for the most part. A runic shielding is one of those really awesome things that Thorncraft adds, which basically protects your hearts. Let's head over here. There's a whole, whole thing right here dedicated to runic shielding. It is going to be a major part of Thorncraft and, of course, any respectable thaumaturge's armor and wear. So let's go and recap what runic shielding is basically, as I already just said, a barrier of magical energy that wards out most types of damage. So it'll take the damage out of your runic shielding before it hurts your hearts. There are several items that you can craft, even with just the basic runic shielding, such as the ring of runic shielding, which gives you a runic shield plus five, the amulet, which gives plus eight, and I believe there is a girdle that gives a whopping plus 10. But before I made any of these, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't missing out on something 3.14159265 three times as cool in one of these other runic shielding trees. So we'll get started over here, top left, with the charged ring of shielding with the flavor text. Charge for the charge ring! <laughs> It requires six Portentia, three Prei Cantatio, and three Tutamen to purchase. So let's go ahead and pick that up. When we read about it, it says that this is a specialized version of the Ring of Shielding. It has slightly less charge than the ring it is based on, but increases the recharge time of Runic Shielding by 25%. You can wear more than one of these rings, effectively halving the normal recharge time. Well, that's cool. That's a pretty awesome thing, but it only gives you a runic shield plus four, so it's slightly less, but it takes slightly faster to charge. That's a pretty good balance, requiring a heap of essentia to make, as well as some fire shards and a speed potion of swiftness. A speed potion! It's faster than your average potion, as well as a balance shard, and of course the actual ring of runic shielding itself. So that's like a double infused item right there. Pretty awesome. Okay, that's one down. Let's go for the next one, the Revitalizing Ring of Shielding. Go ahead. I can take it. Requiring four Sanno, four Aqua, three Pre Cantatio, and three Tutamen to purchase. So let's pick that up. It seems that this is a specialized version of the Ring of Shielding. Surprise, surprise. It has, a slightly, it has slightly less charge than the ring it is based on. But when your Runic Shielding is breached, it will release a pulse of regenerative energy that will last for a few seconds. This effect cannot trigger more than once every 20 seconds. So what exactly is this regenerative energy and what does it do? <laughs> regenerative energy? Oh, are we talking like it'll help out your hearts? Okay. Pulse of regenerative energy. So it seems like it's going to give you the regeneration potion effect. Now that is good. <laughs> that is a really good one actually that is really good <laughs> if, if it gives you a regeneration buff that would be fantastic but how long is that pulse though we're gonna have to make it and find out aren't we aren't we yeah so i guess it lasts less than 20 seconds so eh it would heal a heart or two mm, okay you'd rather just have a regeneration potion honestly <laughs> Rather than, have, rather than spending a regeneration potion making one of these things, you're probably just better off having the regen potion now that I think about it, but having it all bottled up in a, in a ring would actually be also, it's also pretty good. We'll move on to the kinetic girdle of shielding. <laughs> you're going to regret that. Requiring six ire, three prey cantatio, and three tutamen to pick up. So what does this one have to say about it? It has a slightly less charge than your girdle it is based on, of course. But when your shielding is breached, a detonation of kinetic energy will be released, damaging and shoving back anything nearby. A detonation of kinetic energy. Wow. Wow, that is cool. <laughs> that one's actually really expensive, too. Look at those aspects. You almost need... Three filled jars of stuff. They're not particularly expensive though. It doesn't. I mean, this one's a potion as well. Instant damage. Detonation. 
shoving anything back nearby. So it's like, is it a knockback potion or is it an instant damage potion? That one's pretty cool. So it has a runic shield plus nine. Well, that's, you know, that's... If you're going for your root girdle of runic shielding, you might as well go for your kinetic girdle of shielding because that's almost as good, but it's way better. <laughs> well, almost as good runic shield. I mean, yeah, because that's a huge runic shield and that's also really huge. So, you know, I, I could, I can understand going for that one. I would go for that one if I was making a girdle of shielding. So the final one here is the Amulet of Emergency Shielding. You can't get me that easily. If I had to guess, this is a runic shield that will come up when our shield is breached. That one, that one is going to require 4 Terra, 4 Wakwas, 3 Pre, Cantatio, and 3 Tutamen, but we don't have enough Wakwas. So let's quickly pick some up. Wakwas is over here. Get that down and check it out. What do you have to say, amul Amulet of Emergency Shielding? But when your shielding is breached, this upgrade will instantly add a charge to your shielding amount. Yeah, that's kind of what I guessed. The effect cannot trigger more than once a minute. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so it has plus 7, but when it depletes, it will give you plus 8. Okay. Okay, that's... It is also pretty good. Again, if you're going to go for the amulet, you might as well go for this too, because that's almost as good in terms of runic shielding, but that is a huge... That is a that is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so if you're going to make the amulet, you might as well go for that, in my opinion, because that just it's so much more powerful. Yeah, I'd, I'd trade one runic shield to have eight later, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would. Anyway, that is the uh, the extra runic shielding items out of the way. That's kind of what I was expecting, to be honest. Some different ways of manipulating the runic shielding, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, the, the, the girdle and the amulet have impressed me. These two, not as much. I mean, this what, so what was this? Increases the recharge time to runic shielding. Yeah, uh, it's... Mm, it's not too bad, but, you know, I'd rather just have that plus one. You know, it depends how long it takes to charge. And this one as well, eh, you know, like I said, the potion is really nice. So we've got one more thing here related to runic shielding. The runic shielding augmentation shields to maximum. And this one is one that we're actually going to have to research. So let's pick up our scribing tools and paper and check this guy out. Get that note. It's a sort of a greeniness. Cool beans, cool beans. We're actually almost out of ink in that, aren't we? You've only got a few drops left. This one's quite a small grid. Requires Lucrum, Permutatio, Tutamen, and Precantatio. Right then. Let's get started with this one. So Tutamen, I'm going to look at first, has Instrumentum and Terra. Hmm. We could go Instrumentum. I'm thinking Ordo is going to be one that we're connecting to. That's going to be quite important. Yes, so we could go Instrumentum. I think Instrumentum is made of Ordo, yes. So we could go Instrumentum Ordo, and then Preicantatio, we could go Portentia. But this thing needs to connect to that too, okay. Because this will connect to Ordo. Well, we could... Hmm. Is there another way out round to Ordo? Well, that's... Because we'd have to go Perditio... You know, it would just be easy to have Ordo right there. So, I think what we'll do is have Ordo right here. And there we go, now we're out of ink. Right, let's pick up an ink sack. That's gonna happen. Just like new. Awesome. And then we've got Lucrum kind of hiding over here that's made up, of, made up of Umanus and Farmez. Okay. So we could do something like a Farmez Victus Sano. That would work. That can work. What about this? Cognitio. Okay. Yeah, that's probably going to be the quickest way, actually. So let's uh, set that up. What about this guy? We'll set two Tarmen up as well. That was going to be Instrumentum. Unless we could connect this to Instrumentum or something like that, it could be pretty interesting. But yeah, let's, uh, let's set this up. So Luke Room was going Farm S, Weak Tooth. If I can find that. Pick one of those up and some Sano. There we go. That's those two sorted out. Now all we have to do is connect this up. We could go... There's a whole lot of aspects that we can connect to here, so... 
Not spoiled for choice, that's for sure. We've got Wakwos and Portentia. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I found something, but it's going to be a little bit of a long shot. We'll go Motus, then we'll follow that up with Hyr, then we'll go Lux, and then we'll go Tenebre, like so, and finally Wakwos. <laughs> It's kind of higgledy piggledy there. This uh, this one aspect challenge has been really fun to do. I'm really happy that I decided to do it because I've learned so much more about the aspects. Anyway, there it is, runic shielding augmentation. Oh man, what has it got to say? This better be interesting. Rings, amulets, and girdles with runic shielding is all getting well, but surely you can apply this protective enchantment to other things. Of course you can. <laughs> By utilizing the magic of thaumaturgy, <laughs> copyright patent pending, you are able to add runic shielding to most magically stable pieces of armor. Magically stable items are those crafted from thaumium, enchanted fabric, or similarly magical materials. Only a single charge of runic shielding is added to the item, but you can enchant an item multiple times. This is expensive and the amount of ingredients and ascent you required will increase with each level. The Salis Mundus required will equal the level of shielding you want, and the Essentia cost will increase exponentially. You can enchant existing runic items like Rings of Shielding as well. However, the cost is calculated based on their existing runic charge, making it an exceptionally expensive process. Hmm. Okay. So what is this? Right. So it, okay, it'll put it'll put a runic shield on your armor. I see. And it says it'll do it from thormium stuff. So it doesn't just have to be this thormatosia's robe, by the looks. So that's going to take your robe as well as Celise. What the? Holy! Did you see that? It's going to cost two hundred, five hundred, and twelve. 512 Potentia? Really? Is added to the item. So do you have to step this up? Do you have to start at plus one? Oh my god. You do. Oh my goodness. What is that? That's like a thousand Essentia? A thousand Potentia? <laughs> oh my goodness. A thousand potentia. How many jars is that? Holy cow! And like 500 Braeek and Tartia as well. Oh my goodness. Ish. I can't math. It's a lot. That is so much Essentia. 250. Holy crap, man. That is so good. But that is also ex. Extremely expensive. Azador, what have you done to me? <laughs> that is ridiculous. Wow, okay. We are going to have to go for this. <laughs> Regrettably, we will have to go for this because YouTube. Oh man. So you can have up to five, I'm guessing, right? So does that mean that we can take things like this ring and can we buff that up to plus five? Probably. In which case, yeah, okay, these are really good then. And you can probably buff this back up to plus ten as well. Wow. That is so crazy. <laughs> oh man, okay. Cool, expensive, but yeah. We can't do that yet, man. I don't have anywhere near that much Essentia. Man, I'm going to have just have jars spewed all over the place of Tutamen. <laughs> so that was Tutamen, Praia Contatio, and the third one was Portentia. Portentia I'm using for my fuel at the moment. For my wings. But, um... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think we'll end this episode off... By probably going ahead and crafting ourselves up some of this gear here. So that's a lot cheaper. <laughs> I'm a bit happier crafting that stuff. So 
Yeah, just give me a couple of seconds, guys, to prepare some materials. And we will be right back. Before we get started with the infusion, I just wanted to bring it, your guys' attention towards this platform that I've made. I'm not happy with the design that I've come up with for this platform so far. I've just been playing around with the designs. This is the latest that I've got. Eh, no, it's, it's not what I'm happy with. We need to come up with something else. Anyway, the materials are here ready to go for the Ring of the Runic Shielding. So let's do it. Just had to quickly burn up a couple of nether wart to get myself the extra amount of Prey Cantatio to make sure that we had enough for this infusion. We've had to make a bunch of spare materials for this one. We've got Primal Charms as well as Scribing Tools. As I've been running around here, the Primal Charms have actually been filling up my wand. If you're just new to Thorncraft, I would recommend one of the very first items that you should be gunning for is a Primal Charm because it's actually really helpful if you're starting out for uh, generating uh, magic for your wand, or Vs for your wand, I suppose. Anyway, the items are going in now. What I really like about this as well is that uh, when the items go in, it's aware that there is an obstacle here, so the things kind of dodge around it. That is the first of the rings. I've got enough materials here to make two rings. The Ring of the Runic Shielding, on you go. <laughs> I'm making an amulet and another ring as well, so let's get these back down. Run O. So the ring's going to be a pentagon shape. So enchanted fabric. Nitor, as well as the scribing tools over here. There we go. So, do it, baby. <laughs> and goes the Tutaman. Now, the really cool thing about this system as well is that even though this is getting where it's draining from, uh, the tank actually gets topped off by these tanks that are on top. That's part of the design of this, so that this can always stay full. Maybe we can incorporate that into when we eventually build the super duper mega flooper armor that we will no doubt need at some point. One, so it says it can do it on Thormium stuff, I'm assuming it can do it on Thormium Fortress stuff? That would be absolutely fantastic for when we go into the nether, I mean the end, excuse me, to face the ender dragon. It'd be nice to have runic shielding on everything and just completely dominate. <laughs> completely dominate the ender dragon after which, and then after that we will probably try fighting the ender dragon. Anyway, there goes another five runic shielding points, and that puts it in half, and it looks like it uh, it recharges uh, heart, a heart at a time, I see. I see. Uh, we've seen runic shielding before on the, uh, on the, in the series here, uh, way, way ages ago when you can find those rings and chests that have plus one, which are kind of crappy in comparison to these, anyway. We have one final thing to craft, the mun <coughs> excuse me, the mundane amulet. Let's get down this stuff. Wait, did that just flash a seventh colour? Probably not, you liar. Let's get these down, and we're gonna need two pieces of night ore as well. And finally some more scribing tools. I think that's the right recipe. Let's do a check up. Check it up. That is correct Amundo. Let's just get some spare materials on the hot bar. Cause goodness knows. Right, let's go. Go, 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 go. So we should have 35. 14 plus, that is plenty. And heaps of portent to your left and the two time in. Yeah, we got tons of that too. Awesome. Come on, everybody. Do, 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 do. I'm not sure if I've said in these uh, YouTube videos, but uh, we're recently celebrating. Oh, hello, that's a. Uh, Warp effect. Uh, we're celebrating uh, 1600 subscribers uh, recently. 1600 subscribers on the channel now. Thank you very much everyone for your continued support on these videos and the channel in general. You're making things happen. You are making things happen with your support. In go the items. Amber, Enchanted Fabric. There's not a whole lot to say. We've seen a bunch of infusions now. I wonder if I should keep doing almost every single infusion on camera. I have been doing a couple of them off camera, such as enchanting the enchanting armor, as well as the lamps of growth. I've done a few of those. Oh, hey, is that animated? The amulet of runic shielding? I forgot to uh, actually scan these. Scan Stan. Rule number one of Thorncraft. We discovered that last episode. Right. 
So the Ring of Runic Shielding has got... Okay. Got some Oldo in there as well as Parnus. Don't normally see those two together. Very cool. So that is a whopping 10 plus 8. So we've got a Runic Shield of plus 18, which is pretty monstrous. But we can make that even bigger, can't we? <laughs> With all the various enchantments that you can do. Man, that armor one is just so, so ridiculously expensive, but we are going to have to do it. We are going to have to do it, which will be a pretty cool episode. That's going to take fusion. It's going to take four freaking ages. <laughs> At least the aspects aren't too hard to come by. I probably have everything already. Where was it? Yeah, I probably uh, have the capacity to make all of these, except maybe the two tar man. That's probably going to be the hardest one to come across. I've probably got this in coal down in the alchemy lab, and this, yeah, that's going to be a little bit harder to find. Greatwood trees or... Uh, nether wart possibly, but yeah. So that is going to be it for this episode of Thorncraft 4.2 with Bird Trust. We oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> we'll probably run a little bit over time here, to be honest, but that's okay. I'm sure you guys are enjoying the daily videos. I'm trying to get daily videos out at the moment. Let me know what you think in the comment section below of what has been happening. Thank you very much for watching Kia Kaha, and I'll see you in the next video.